Hi, this is James, and today we'll be reviewing my little 1895 Russian Nagant revolver. Uh, this is a seven-shot double-action revolver that was first introduced in Imperial Russian service back in 1895, and it was produced and issued up through World War II. This particular one is made in 1944, and it's chambered for the 7.62 by 38 rim cartridge. It's a unique gas field cartridge with a 110 grain bullet that is seated inside the case like a full wad cutter. Now for those of you guys who have been with me for a long time, you know that I reviewed this particular handgun uh, some time ago as one of my very first reviews. This was the first handgun that I truly reviewed and it really got me into reviewing. Uh, it's an interesting little handgun. At the time I could pick them up for $99, but that's changed. This one I've got about two years ago and I paid about 260 bucks for it, which isn't too bad even for those times. Uh, the prices have definitely gone up, as has the ammunition, but it's an interesting little gun, and it's fun to shoot. This is the 1895 Nagant revolver. It is one of the last service handguns developed by Leon Nagant of Belgium, and this particular one, of course, this design was adopted by the Russian Empire in 1895. At the cusp of swing-out cylinder, revolvers. This is a very conservative design. If we take a closer look at it, we can see the typical bag style of grip. This one has plastic grips, being as made in 1944 and not in the earlier days. Uh, it has a lanyard loop, but overall the bluing and the design is relatively conservative. We have a double action, single action handgun, which means the hammer can either be fired by pulling all the way through. Have a heavy trigger pull, about 20 pounds. You notice the cylinder. The cylinder moves forward to seal against the forcing cone. Uh, that is for the gas seal 7.62 by 38 millimeter cartridge to actually work to eliminate the cylinder gap between the barrel and the forcing cone so you get higher velocity. Well, for some reason, the Imperial government really liked this and they rent with it. But also, uh, bear in mind, you can cock the hammer for a lighter single action pull, which isn't too bad. The sights are relatively decent. The front sight's pretty prominent, but the rear sight, you just have a, a groove. But otherwise, this is a seven shot handgun. And it's, like I said, it's chambered for the 762 by 38 rem cartridge. A uh, relatively high velocity cartridge for its time. You have your loading gate. And you might notice, if I push that loading gate up, the cylinder still free wheels. That might be an issue for you if you're used to this for a revolver locking up like this, but this is a typical for a handgun of its time. Also notice, this actually has an ejector rod. You unscrew, like so. Move out to the side, and you just poke out your empties, one by one, and load one by one. Like I said, it is slow by today's standards, but you have to bear in mind at the time, swing out cylinders were new technology and not proven. The Russians went with something that was proven, and they went with a cartridge that was relatively potent, especially given what other Europeans were carrying, like 32 ACP, the 8mm French Ordnance, and the 8mm Austrian gas around. Uh, this is actually pretty ahead of its time, and it was a very durable, bulletproof design that lended itself well to uh, the self-defense role for an officer or for a person to get their hands on extra seven shots of defense. This is an excellent little handgun, and it served Russia well through World War I and World War II, and it went more than long enough to actually be exported to other countries. What I can say is that my surplus ammo is 1978 vintage, and so there was still enough of these things floating around to actually warrant ammunition being made. And of course, ammo today can be readily available from Fiocchi, among other makers, but that ammunition is quite weak compared to the surplus stuff, which really makes this handgun have an undeserved reputation for being underpowered. But anyway, enough gabbing. Let's go ahead and shoot a little bit. Close our loading gate. Now these uh, surplus ammunition is pretty powerful, but I've been getting a few duds today, so let me go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just take a a group up there where it's seven yards distance. A little high. Whew. 
and to unload. Open your ejector rod. There's your ejector rod right there, it just folds underneath the barrel. Then you just eject your empty cases. All right, here's our 10 yard group with the 1895 Nagant revolver. All fire double action, uh, not bad accuracy at all. Single action, you tighten it up pretty darn good. Overall, it's a pretty useful little gun. You can still put the rounds on the target, provided you can still find ammo for it. I have tried uh, 32 caliber revolver ammunition. I notice I get split cases, but pretty good accuracy. So in a pinch, that'll work. But you want to wear eye protection if you're going to go ahead and do that. In any case, let me know what you think.